Welcome to the basic obstetric ultrasound training course for healthcare providers. Ultrasound plays an important role in identifying pregnancy related conditions that put the mother or fetus at risk during delivery. In most low income countries, there is a shortage of people experienced in performing pregnancy ultrasound. This course was created to train healthcare workers to perform basic pregnancy ultrasound in parts of the world where formal training is not available. The videos, as well as other educational materials available at tinyurl.com backslash uwultrasound are designed to be used in a two-week ultrasound course. The hands-on sessions in the trainer's guide are an essential component of this course and must be supervised by an experienced ultrasound practitioner. This is not a comprehensive pregnancy ultrasound course and does not result in an official certification or diploma. After you finish the course and pass the written and practical tests, we strongly recommend you have at least 40 hours of scanning experience with clinical mentoring before you undertake unsupervised scanning. My name is Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, and I will be narrating this third video in our Pregnancy Ultrasound series. This video will discuss tomography, which means taking images in slices. Please visit our website for access to all of our video and training materials. In this lesson, you will learn how to properly orient your transducer, orient the screen, rapidly survey a pregnant uterus, and how to determine the orientation of the fetus with a single transverse scan during the late second and third trimester. Tomography simply means taking images or pictures in slices. This is how ultrasound works. Imagine if we sliced a knife through this box towards the front and then towards the back. Those slices would look like S1 and S2 here. Ultrasound takes images in the same way. An ultrasound shows only the objects that you sliced through. On the other hand, an x-ray shows everything together from front to back. If we took an x-ray of the box, it would look like P. Each image is like a slice of bread. When all the images are combined, the object becomes three-dimensional. As you become more proficient at ultrasound, you will begin to visualize objects as three-dimensional in your head as you scan. We use the terms sagittal and transverse plane frequently as we take ultrasound images. A sagittal plane divides the body into right and left sides. This is the plane when the transducer is oriented towards the patient's head which we will discuss how to do in the next slide. A transverse plane divides the body into top and bottom, which is how we always begin an ultrasound scan. This is the plane when the transducer is oriented towards the patient's right side. The coronal plane divides the body into a front half and a back half. The coronal plane can be seen when using a vaginal probe for the ultrasound. Now we will discuss how to orient the transducer in the right direction so that we can interpret the images on the screen. Some transducers have markers to help us keep our orientation consistent. Please locate the marker on your transducer or on the screen. When correctly positioned, the transducer marker should always be towards the right side of the patient or positioned towards the head of the patient. When doing a sagittal or longitudinal scan, face the marker towards the patient's head. When doing a transverse or cross-section scan, face the marker towards the patient's right side. If the transducer is correctly positioned, as you move the transducer towards the right side of the patient, transverse, and towards the patient's head in the sagittal plane, you will see the image move to the left side of the screen. Please pause the video now to ask your trainer to demonstrate this with hand motions. Even if your transducer doesn't have a marker, always make sure you have the correct position before you begin to scan. This is a transverse view of a fetal abdomen. 
Imagine that you are at the baby's feet, looking up towards its head through the abdomen. This is how the abdominal area would look from that cross-section slice. This is a sagittal view of a fetus. Imagine that you are looking through the baby from its right side. This is how the baby's profile would look from that longitudinal or sagittal slice. There are a few terms that we should introduce now to describe the orientation of the fetus in the uterus. The first term is lie, which refers to the orientation of the fetal spine in relation to the mother's spine. The lie can either be longitudinal or transverse. The next term is fetal presentation, which refers to the leading fetal part that is closest to the pelvic inlet. The fetal presentation can either be cephalic, head down, or breech, head up. A longitudinal lie can mean that the baby is in either the cephalic or breech presentation. Another possibility is that the fetal lie is transverse, which means that the baby is in sideways position, with its head towards one of the maternal sides. A transverse fetal lie, or a breech presentation, can complicate delivery. Now let's apply these terms to an ultrasound image. This is an image of a fetus that is head down, which is a longitudinal lie, and more specifically, a cephalic presentation. Standard practice is to have the mother's head on the left side of the screen and her feet towards the right when you are scanning. Therefore, a fetus with a cephalic presentation has its head towards the mother's feet. When looking at a transverse scan, imagine that you are at the patient's feet looking towards her head. In the next lecture, we will learn to identify these structures. This is the bladder, uterus, and a very early fetus. Notice the anterior side of the patient is at the top of the image, and the patient's posterior is at the bottom. The mother's right side is on the left side of the screen, and her left side is on the right side of the screen. Using these concepts, you can determine the fetal lie in mid to late pregnancy from a single transverse scan. This assumes that the fetus does not change its lie, and the fetal heart and stomach are in normal position, called normal situs on the left. Note that there's a very rare fetal condition called situs inversus, in which the major fetal organs are reversed from their normal position. This occurs in 1 in 8,000 to 1 in 25,000 births. We will assume normal development of the fetus because situs inversus is so rare. Now we will introduce a technique to rapidly survey the pregnant uterus. The Rapid Obstetrical Ultrasound Survey Technique, or ROBUST scan, is a simple but very important technique. With this technique, you can assess fetal lie and the number of fetuses more quickly and clearly. For example, if twins are present, you will learn to recognize them at the beginning of the scan instead of much later or not at all. The symphysis pubis is where the pelvic bones meet in the front. You can feel that bone just above the genital area. You want to begin your scanning just above the symphysis pubis. In the image on the right, the pubic symphysis is located just beneath the sonographer's hand. To start a robust scan, take three sagittal scans from the symphysis pubis, low on the abdomen, to the upper abdomen. The first scan is in the midline, the second to the mother's right of midline, and the third to the mother's left of midline. It is important to use adequate gel for contact with the skin and to scan perpendicular to the skin to optimize the scan and best evaluate the fetus. 
This means that the transducer will rotate around the patient's abdomen as the uterus grows and becomes distended. Please ask your trainer to demonstrate how to maintain a perpendicular angle around the abdomen using a prop or a doll. For these scans, where should your orientation marker on the transducer be? The answer is towards the mother's head. Next, take three transverse scans, scanning from the maternal right to maternal left. The first is just above the symphysis in the lower abdomen, the second in the mid-abdomen, or mid-uterus, and the third across the upper portion of the uterus. This will be in the upper abdomen in the third trimester of pregnancy. For these scans, where should your orientation marker on the transducer be? The answer is towards the mother's right side. All six scans together are known as a robust scan. This is a very important sequence because after you've completed the robust scan, you should be able to confidently determine the number of fetuses, the fetal lie, and if the lie is longitudinal, whether the presentation is cephalic or breech. Please pause the video now to ask any questions. Assume we have a fetus in cephalic presentation, as seen above, with the fetal spine on the maternal left. A single transverse scan of the fetus would result in the image above. Please note the fetal spine, stomach, and liver in the drawing, and also in the ultrasound image. Assuming fetal development is normal, the fetal stomach will always be to the left of the fetal spine. One way to understand this concept is to imagine yourself in the position of the fetus and ask yourself, where is the stomach? Anterior, posterior, left, or right? And where is the spine in relation to the mother and transducer? In this diagram, we have a fetus in breech presentation with the fetal spine on the maternal right. Since the stomach is left-sided, the stomach must be posterior or away from the anterior wall of the uterus, the maternal abdomen, and the transducer. Make sure you understand the position of all these labeled anatomic sites on both the drawing and the ultrasound image. Please pause the video now to take any questions. What is the lie and presentation of the fetus? Note the position of the fetal stomach with respect to the fetal spine. The fetus has a longitudinal lie and is in a cephalic presentation with the fetal spine on the maternal right. Compare structures in the drawings in your handbook with structures in ultrasound. Please pause the video to allow your trainer to demonstrate this fetal position with a doll prop. What is the presentation of the fetus? Remember that the stomach is on the baby's left, assuming normal development. The fetus is in breech presentation with the fetal spine on the maternal left. Compare structures in drawings in your handbook with structures on ultrasound. Please pause the video to allow your trainer to demonstrate fetal position with a doll prop. This fetus has a longitudinal lie on this transverse image. What is the presentation of the fetus? This fetus is in a breech presentation with the spine posterior. This means that the fetus is lying with its spine down and farthest from the transducer. Compare structures and drawings in your handbook with structures on ultrasound. Please pause the video to allow your trainer to demonstrate fetal position with a doll prop. Let's review key points. 
check the transducer position before you begin to scan. It is critical to understand how the image is oriented on the screen. You can quickly see the number and position of fetuses and avoid errors with the robust technique. Assuming the fetus does not move and the anatomy is normal, which means normal fetal situs, you can determine fetal lie and presentation by a single transverse scan. Questions for review. Why is the orientation of the transducer important? If the transducer orientation is not correct, you will have difficulty keeping correct perspective and orienting images. What is the difference between sagittal and transverse? Sagittal divides the body into right and left sides. Transverse divides the body into top and bottom. True or false? On a sagittal scan, the mother's head will be towards the left side of the ultrasound screen. True, the mother's head is always towards the left of the screen in a sagittal image. Why do we use the robust scan? You can determine the lie and presentation of fetuses more quickly. Thank you for your attention and interest in learning pregnancy ultrasound. Please pause the video now to ask your instructor any questions about the course. We thank the following individuals who played a major role in course development. Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. William Marks, and Nicole Goldsmith, registered sonographer. Many other individuals contributed valuable time and expertise in the instructional design and materials development, including Dr. Christina Adams Waldorf, Dr. Scott Barnhart, Dr. Michael Kawuya, Susan Kingston, Stacy Lissett, and Jennifer Summers. Finally, we wish to thank Dr. William Marks for the use of images from his book, Ultrasound, A Practical Approach. The University of Washington Department of Radiology has used this ultrasound course to train healthcare workers in many parts of the world. If you have questions about this video or course, please contact Dr. Robert Nathan, Dr. Marks, or Dr. Adams Waldorf. This course was collaboratively developed by the University of Washington Department of Radiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, and the International Training and Education Center for Health, ITEC. It was made possible through a grant from the GE Foundation. Consano also contributed funding. We are grateful for the video production sponsored by the University of Washington Institute for Simulation and Interprofessional Studies. Please visit our website at tinyurl.com backslash uwultrasound to access all of our training materials. This material